The Tempest of Beautiful Stories from Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Beautiful Stories from Shakespeare by Edith Nesbitt. The Tempest. Prospero, the Duke of Milan, was a learned and studious man, who lived among his books, leaving the management of his dukedom to his brother Antonio, in whom indeed he had complete trust. But that trust was ill rewarded, for Antonio wanted to wear the duke's crown himself, and, to gain his ends, would have killed his brother, but for the love the people bore him. However, with the help of Prospero's great enemy, Alonso, king of Naples, he managed to get into his hands the dukedom with all its honour, power, and riches. For they took Prospero to sea, and when they were far away from land, forced him into a little boat with no tackle, mast, or sail. In their cruelty and hatred they put his little daughter, Miranda, not yet three years old, into the boat with him, and sailed away, leaving them to their fate. But one among the courtiers with Antonio was true to his rightful master, Prospero. To save the duke from his enemies was impossible, but much could be done to remind him of a subject's love. So this worthy lord, whose name was Gonzalo, secretly placed in the boat some fresh water, provisions, and clothes, and what Prospero valued most of all, some of his precious books. The boat was cast on an island and Prospero and his little one landed in safety. Now this island was enchanted, and for years had lain under the spell of a fell witch, Sycorax, who had imprisoned in the trunks of trees all the good spirit she found there. She died shortly before Prospero was cast on those shores, but the spirits, of whom Ariel was the chief, still remained in their prisons. Prospero was a great magician for he had devoted himself almost entirely to the study of magic during the years in which he allowed his brother to manage the affairs of Milan. By his art he set free the imprisoned spirits, yet kept them obedient to his will, and they were more truly his subjects than his people in Milan had been. For he treated them kindly, as long as they did his bidding, and he exercised his power over them wisely and well. One creature alone he found it necessary to treat with harshness. This was Caliban, the son of the wicked old witch, a hideous deformed monster, horrible to look on, and vicious and brutal in all his habits. When Miranda was grown up into a maiden, sweet and fair to see, it chanced that Antonio and Alonso, with Sebastian, his brother, and Ferdinand, his son, were at sea together with old Gonzalo, and their ship came near Prospero's island. Prospero, knowing they were there, raised by his art a great storm, so that even the sailors on board gave themselves up for lost, and first among them all Prince Ferdinand leaped into the sea, and as his father thought in his grief, was drowned. But Ariel brought him safe ashore, and all the rest of the crew, although they were washed overboard, were landed unhurt in different parts of the island, and the good ship herself, which they all thought had been wrecked, lay at anchor in the harbour whither Ariel had brought her. Such wonders could Prospero and his spirits perform. While yet the tempest was raging, Prospero showed his daughter the brave ship labouring in the trough of the sea, and told her that it was filled with living human beings like themselves. She, in pity of their lives, prayed him who had raised the storm to quell it. Then her father bade her to have no fear, for he intended to save every one of them. Then, for the first time, he told her the story of his life and hers, and that he had caused the storm to rise in order that his enemies, Antonio and Alonso, who were on board, might be delivered into his hands. When he had made an end of his story he charmed her into sleep, for Ariel was at hand, and he had work for him to do. Ariel, who longed for his complete freedom, grumbled to be kept in drudgery, but on being threateningly reminded of all the sufferings he had undergone when Sycorax ruled in the land, and of the debt of gratitude he owed to the master who had made those sufferings to end, he ceased to complain, and promised faithfully to do whatever Prospero might command. "'Do so,' said Prospero, 
and in two days I will discharge thee. Then he bade Ariel take the form of a water nymph, and sent him in search of the young prince, and Ariel, invisible to Ferdinand, hovered near him, singing the while, Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands, curtsied when you have, and kissed, the wild waves whist, foot it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burden bear. And Ferdinand followed the magic singing, as the song changed to a solemn air, and the words brought grief to his heart, and tears to his eyes, for thus they ran. Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs hourly ring his knell. Hark, now I hear them. Ding dong bell. And so singing, Ariel led the spellbound prince into the presence of Prospero and Miranda. Then, behold, all happened as Prospero desired. For Miranda, who had never, since she could first remember, seen any human being save her father, looked on the youthful prince with reverence in her eyes, and love in her secret heart. "'I might call him,' she said, "'a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble.' And Ferdinand, beholding her beauty with wonder and delight, exclaimed, "'Most sure the goddess on whom these airs attend!' Nor did he attempt to hide the passion which she inspired in him, for scarcely had they exchanged half a dozen sentences, before he vowed to make her his queen if she were willing. But Prospero, though secretly delighted, pretended wrath. "'You come here as a spy,' he said to Ferdinand. "'I will manacle your neck and feet together, and you shall feed on fresh-water mussels, withered roots and husk, and have sea-water to drink. Follow!' No, said Ferdinand, and drew his sword. But on the instant Prospero charmed him so that he stood there like a statue, still as stone, and Miranda in terror prayed her father to have mercy on her lover. But he harshly refused her, and made Ferdinand follow him to his cell. There he set the prince to work, making him remove thousands of heavy logs of timber and pile them up, and Ferdinand patiently obeyed and thought his toil all too well repaid by the sympathy of the sweet Miranda. She, in very pity, would have helped him in his hard work, but he would not let her, yet he could not keep from her the secret of his love, and she, hearing it, rejoiced and promised to be his wife. Then Prosper released him from his servitude, and glad at heart he gave his consent to their marriage. "'Take her,' he said. "'She is thine own.' In the meantime, Antonio and Sebastian in another part of the island were plotting the murder of Alonso, the king of Naples, for Ferdinand being dead, as they thought, Sebastian would succeed to the throne on Alonso's death, and they would have carried out their wicked purpose while their victim was asleep, but that Ariel woke him in good time. Many tricks did Ariel play them. Once he set a banquet before them, and just as they were going to fall to, he appeared to them amid thunder and lightning in the form of a harpy, and immediately the banquet disappeared. Then Ariel upbraided them with their sins, and vanished too. Prospero by his enchantments drew them all to the grove without his cell, where they waited, trembling and afraid, and now at last bitterly repenting them of their sins. Prospero determined to make one last use of his magic power. And then, said he, I'll break my staff, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. So he made heavenly music to sound in the air, and appeared to them in his proper shape as the Duke of Milan. Because they repented, he forgave them and told them the story of his life, since they had cruelly committed him and his baby daughter to the mercy of wind and waves. Alonso, who seemed sorriest of them all for his past crimes, lamented the loss of his heir. But Prospero drew back a curtain and showed them Ferdinand and Miranda playing at chess. Great was Alonso's joy to greet his loved son again and when he heard that the fair maid with whom Ferdinand was playing was Prospero's daughter, and that the young folks had plighted their troth, he said, "'Give me your hands. 
Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. So all ended happily. The ship was safe in the harbour, and next day they all set sail for Naples, where Ferdinand and Miranda were to be married. Ariel gave them calm seas and auspicious gales, and many were the rejoicings at the wedding. Then Prospero, after many years of absence, went back to his own dukedom, where he was welcomed with great joy by his faithful subjects. He practised the arts of magic no more, but his life was happy, and not only because he had found his own again, but chiefly because, when his bitterest foes who had done him deadly wrong lay at his mercy, he took no vengeance on them, but nobly forgave them. As for Ariel, Prospero made him free as air, so that he could wander where he would, and sing with a light heart his sweet song. Where the bee sucks, there suck I. In a cowslip's bell I lie. There I couch when owls do cry. On the bat's back I do fly, after summer merrily. Merrily, merrily shall I live now, under the blossom that hangs on the bough. End of the Tempest